Welcome to Raiders on the Record, the podcast featuring Hastings High School Athletics. I'm Athletic Director Trent Hansen. My colleague Tim Hanneberg and I work together to bring you the stories of Raiders sports. We are thrilled to share conversations with the athletes, coaches, and alumni that represent Raider Nation. Check back weekly and be sure to share this podcast with your friends in the Raiders Network. Sue Frost McVicker is a 1995 Raider graduate. During her time at Hastings High School, Sue played multiple sports and collected numerous awards and accolades. In soccer, she was a three-year letter winner, captain of the team, and awards such as Most Offensive, MVP, All-Conference, All-Metro, and All-Section. In basketball, Sue was a two-year letter winner and won awards for being All-Section and All-Conference. She also led her team to the section finals her senior year, where they were nearly defeated. In track, she participated in the 100-meter hurdles, 300-meter hurdles, long jump, 4x200-meter relay, and numerous other races and relays. Sue also was all-conference two times for track. Finally, during her senior year, she participated in golf. After high school, she attended River Falls and then St. Olaf, where she played soccer for three seasons. Since graduating college, Sue has coached multiple teams in sports in Hastings, such as HFC soccer, high school JV soccer, and numerous travel basketball teams. Sue has great insight into into the unique role sports can play in one's life and ends the conversation with wise advice for parents, coaches, and athletes. Here we are with Sue Frost, now Sue McVicker. Sue, take us back to you growing up. Uh, Give us a little snapshot of your family. Uh, What did it look like? Did you guys always live in Hastings? Did you eventually move to Hastings at what time? Uh, Did your parents grow up in Hastings? What did they do for a living? Brothers, sisters, any kind of extended family around the area? So give us, uh, like I said, that snapshot of what it looked like you growing up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess I consider myself a third generation. Um, my grandparents were here, um, grew up, went to school here on the Frost side. And then my dad actually went through school all the way here. He was a big uh, wrestler and uh, baseball player in school. His nickname was Spitty um, because he threw a fabulous spitball. Um, so we'll just start off. And then I went through school here too. And now um, obviously my children, uh, Taylor, Keegan, and Xander are going through. So just to kind of roll it all the way back, gosh, my family. So it's my mom and dad. I have two older brothers that were 11 and 13 years older than me. Um, They graduated in 1984 and 85. Uh, They were big into sports too, but I guess kind of, I felt like I grew up as an only child because by the time I hit first grade, they were into college. So I remember my wee little years going to football, basketball, and track meets, um, watching my brothers play. They were a big influence. And then I remember through elementary school, my brother was a rugby player down at Mankato State. Um, I remember going to his rugby games. And then my other brother, Mike, he played basketball as well. Um, Gosh, just lots of ties to Hastings. Both of them played for Coach Moore. Um, My brother, Mike, was um, up till the very last season, just recently, my brother Mike was on the most winning team for Coach Moore. And so he came back and actually talked to the team too um, that was taking over with the new record, which I think was the one with um, Izzy Arnold, maybe that group that went through. So um, pretty cool. Um, yeah, so again, I went to Tilden Elementary right in town, uh, went over to the Hastings Middle School and then on to the high school. Uh, lived in Hastings my whole life, was born at Regina. We lived on Vermilion Street and I lived there literally from the time I was born till the time we graduated. So I didn't even move much. That's awesome. Um, Yeah. So we had big, another big fun memory is big oak trees. So every homecoming, lots of uh, great teeping opportunities and I had about three, four hours of cleanups the next day too. Um, Oh, that's great. Oh, that's super cool. So this is mainly a sports podcast. We focus around a lot of sports. So take us back. You, you mentioned going to those, uh, your older brother's sporting events uh, throughout when you're, you were very young. What do you think your best or one of your earliest sports memories was growing up then? Sure. So I would say my brother, Mike, um, he went through, he had a really strong basketball career. 
Um, some of my really strong memories from him were a couple of times we would get phone calls and he was, um, he wasn't even the center. They actually had like a six, five center Rob Bremer that went through, but um, he was kind of a wing, but he could dunk, had an awesome vertical. And so a couple of my fun sports memories, honestly, were when I was like four and probably like kindergarten, first grade getting phone calls and um, my brother would dunk and he broke several backboards at the schools. So we'd always go over and take pictures and different things like that. Um, but yeah, I remember still at the time. So like also our middle school um, was, or today's middle school was our high school. So I remember kind of being in that gym more than anything growing up. Um, that's where my brothers played, pulling out the bleachers on both sides and uh, yeah just a lot of fun games, a lot of fun atmospheres. They'd have the band set up there, cheerleaders, much different than nowadays where we don't really have those attending the game, so to speak. Just a lot of fun atmosphere. Nice. Um, so my earliest memories really are of like my brother Mike playing basketball and then similar, they both played uh, football together as well. Awesome. We had a lot of people on here. Their first job was detasseling corn. I think I went through five people <laughs> whose <laughs> first job was detasseling corn. Uh, I don't think that's going to be your answer, but uh, no. let's hear about your first job here in Hastings growing up. Yeah. So my first job growing up, um, super funny. So again, I lived on Vermilion Street about three, four blocks down towards the bridge. There was this restaurant restaurant called the Drury Inn. Um, it since has burnt down. Um, I worked there for about two weeks as a dishwasher. Um right before soccer started one fall season. I think it was like my 10th grade year. And I just decided washing dishes was not for me. It lasted two weeks, put in my notice and uh, that was about it. So then I didn't get a job again till the following summer. And then, and then I just kind of had an array of jobs. I jumped around actually quite a bit. So uh, you name it in Hastings, I've probably worked there. I've delivered papers. I've worked at the Legion, Super America, Walmart back when it was over at Coburn's. Um, yeah, lots of places. <laughs> oh, that's great. So like I said, this is a sports podcast. So walk us through your sports journey. Uh, let's start off when you're really little. You said a couple of times now, you start off watching your older brothers play sports. Talk about the sports you played growing up. And uh, for you, let's stop maybe somewhere around uh, seventh or eighth grade. It seems like most people I talk to, that's when sports get a little more serious. Uh, so talk about the sports you played growing up. Uh, any teams you were on and any highlights from those teams up until about eighth grade? Yeah, no, that sounds good. Yeah. So I started off sports actually really early. My mom put them in just because, um, again, I kind of felt like an only child. My brothers were out of the house. We lived in an old part of Hastings where we didn't have a lot of neighbors and kids around. So um, starting right away, she had put me in HYAA sports and I played up a couple years. And she just kind of got me started because that was really my only social interaction because I didn't go to daycare. I was at home all the time and I was a super busy kid that she wanted to kind of get out of the house and use up my energy. So um, yeah, I really did pretty much anything there was to do. I did HYA soccer. I tried HYA softball. Um, I did haste swimming. Uh, I did gymnastics. Um, I did volleyball through HYA as well. So I pretty much anything that was offered, I tried it. Um, so that was pretty much all my elementary years. And then once middle school sports came around, um, I did soccer at middle school in the fall. And it was actually kind of nice because in the middle school, they kind of set it up as like a four sports season. So you really didn't have to choose. You could still kind of sample all of the sports that were out there. So I went from soccer to basketball. Basketball was still November, December. And then January, February was a volleyball season because our old middle school where the green mill was, we had several gyms where they didn't have to kind of make you select what sports you could do. They had enough gym space for everything. And then I did track in the spring. Um, and then in the summer I would do travel soccer through, gosh, I think it was still HYA back then that it was sponsored by. And then I also um, would do basketball too on the side. So yeah, kind of did that all the way through middle school, seventh and eighth grade. I was always busy with something, at least one, if not two sports at a time. So like to keep nice. really busy. So then we get to ninth grade. If you want to walk, if you want to take it as a whole, you know, you, you want to talk about each sport, like, uh, you know, you did this sport and then you could go through the whole kind of nine through 12, or if you want to break it down year by year, what sports you did uh, and talk about each kind of season and each year, that's great too. 
Uh, and then let's talk about any accomplishments uh, for you individually, you know, uh, a captain, all conference, all state, all, all um, section, anything of that nature. And then uh, any accomplishments with your team as well, teams as well. Yeah, no, that sounds good. Yeah, so I can start off with each sport kind of doing it that way. Um, again, I tried pretty much all the sports in high school as well. So we'll start off with the fall season. Well, we'll start off by saying, so I was actually a really small and I hit this really large growth spurt. So in eighth grade, I went from, I would say maybe five feet. And then by the ninth grade, I was five, eight. So I grew like six to eight inches <laughs> in this year. Um, and I ended up having a lot of breathing issues. And so when I went in, I was actually diagnosed with a heart murmur. And oh, wow. back at the time, they actually made me sit out of sports for six to eight months. And so Holy while cow. my heart had a chance to repair. So we'll start off with soccer season. I actually didn't even play soccer freshman year. Um, didn't go out for it just because I was still on hold. And, um, but I started back up my sophomore year. So sophomore year, um, I was on varsity um, and I played sophomore year through senior year. I would say that, you know, soccer was always just kind of my fun sport because we never as a whole group in Hastings with the conference we competed in, um, I would say we were competitive, but we were never in the top. We were never in the bottom tier. We were always in the middle where there was a couple teams where we didn't have enough depth to really um, come out on top. So we would compete hard. Um, you know, we were always really physical. That's kind of how we could make up for some of, say, the skill gap that was you know, between the teams, but we always had it as our fun sport, just because we knew, um, like I said, we competed well, but we were never going to come out on top. So we never, not that we didn't invest, but it wasn't a letdown because it was just meant to be fun. Um, yeah. So sophomore through senior year, we played soccer. I would say our best soccer season was junior year because we had Nikki Johnson, who was our goalie. Um, she was a senior that year. She went on to play uh, soccer at St. Mary's and she was an all-state goalie. Um, and so we were super competitive because we had a really good offense that year. Um, we also had like Amy Jo Johnson, now Hanson, um, and Carrie Miller, Lucretia, myself. And so we were able, really strong offensively. And then we had a really good defensive area too. You know, we had Denise Deutsch back there who was our sweeper. And then with Nikki and Nett, we stopped a lot. So that was probably our most competitive season. I bet you we were you know, 750, which was really good for us. Um, and that was a lot of fun. Senior year, again, we were really strong, had a great season, but more towards 500. It's really hard. I really compare it to probably the season this year, the soccer girls had, mm -hmm. where you have such great field players and it's really good. Um, you have good goalies, but maybe like as soon as you lose that all state goalie, like they did with even KP, sometimes mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you can't compete at the same level and you shouldn't have to, you know, it's like, it's just the team you have. So um, again, we were 500, still it was fun. And it's all about the chemistry and the memories you make anyway. Um, we were all playing for each other. We had a great time. Um, so really with soccer, I would say, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I awards from that, I was captain. Um, I went from most improved to most valuable player on the team for two years, um, most offensive. I was um, all conference honorable mention, all conference, all Metro. Um, all section. So um, it's kind of the sport, even though it was, I call it my fun sport. Um, it was the one I was probably the most successful in. And it's the one I went on and played in college as well. Um, so then kind of moving into winter season, it was basketball season. So this is kind of like, I call my serious sport just because we were so competitive, yeah. which, you know, as we have talked before, like the 96 team, I graduated in 95, they won state, we lost in section finals to go to state. So um, again, still super competitive. So uh, I was able to come back freshman year and play basketball. The doctor released me to play uh, one minute a quarter. Um, so that was <laughs> a lot of fun, <laughs> but it was like my step back. So I took it. Um, and then, so freshman year, I played on the freshman team. Sophomore year, I played on the sophomore team. And at the end of the year, um, there was a group of four of us, we had a pretty strong year that got pulled up to varsity just to kind of practice with them at the end of the season and, um, you know, sit through sections. No one actually saw the court. It was more about support and, hey, this is where you're going to probably be next year type thing. Um, junior year, played varsity. 
um, and senior year played varsity. And I would say basketball for me was really one of those unique experiences. Um, we just had, especially, so like, I think about my sophomore year, Tom Johnson was the coach, the head coach, um, the old athletic director. And then junior year, we had Melissa Young. And then senior year, we had uh, Michelle Schall, who was there for the state tournament too, or the state championship team. And I just look at it and the program had changed over so many times with different identities and different head coaches. And why I think the team was as strong as it is, and even that state championship team, is they had to adapt so many times and be able to be just a different type of team for each coach and how they thought the team should play. And I think just the different styles of play probably made us stronger without us even realizing it because we would approach the game each year a little differently, um, but still kind of had the past of how we would approach the game in our, in our tool chest of how we could change if it, an opponent changed on us. So yeah, basketball was a lot of fun. Um, we had- think, Oh, sorry to interrupt. No, go ahead. I was gonna ask, thinking about basketball too, this is something I asked Katie uh, last year. So you were a senior and a lot of those girls that were on the state championship team were juniors and sophomores and a little below that too. What, what do you think the vibe was on the team coming up? Like, did, did you, did you guys believe that you guys were going to have, the girls were going to have that good of a year, the year after you graduated? Uh, did you know kind of the girls on the team that were coming up? Uh, so what do, what do you think like the vibe was on the team and, and how do you guys think that you were going to do in the future? Right. So I would say, so my junior year, I knew we were going to be strong our senior year, just all the way through travel. We had a really strong team. We were one of the first, I shouldn't say first. Well, I can say it. So we were one of the first, even though the years below us were competing at an A level too. Right. So we were one of the older groups to compete at an A level first, and we were winning tournaments and doing well. So I knew we would compete well when we were our senior year. Um, I actually, after we graduated, I knew the next class was really strong as well, just because we had left behind like Leslie Miller as a tall, um, obviously Aaron Diddy, Katie Hertel. So for as much as we graduated three or four really strong players, there was already four or five strong players stepping into those shoes. And I think that's why we were so strong my senior year and why they were so strong the next year is mm -hmm. every practice we had was hard competition. And we were getting each other better every practice. And it was just such a fun atmosphere. I remember running up, which it's the middle school now was our high school. So we would run wind sprints at the end of practices and we'd go up and run around like the big rectangles, right? And just run sprints. And then you'd like run a sprint, 15 second rest, run a sprint, right? And so I remember getting them and I was really, I, I kind of prided myself in my endurance like I could sprint those, we would get done and I'd be ready to go again. And I remember all the other girls gasped and I would be like, let's go one more, we need this, you know? And so we would go again. And I just remember like getting down to the final people. And it was so fun because Katie Hertel was right there with me. She's like, yeah, let's go. And so she and I would just push each other and we'd try to push the others. And that's kind of like the chemistry of the team that we had. It was always never competing against each other but we were competing to make each other better. So it was just a lot of fun. I remember that season was, yeah, we just had so much fun. And I remember probably one of my biggest sports memory was losing in the section finals, just that disappointment because we felt like it was such an opportunity we could have grabbed and been able to compete. And then just having to kind of flip through our fingers and not playing the game that we were capable of playing. Mm -hmm. So, um, that is one of my biggest sports memories. And it's kind of strange to have it be a disappointing one. Um, but then I can also say another fantastic sports memory for me was one year later watching the championship game up in the arena and like my eyes filled with tears because I was so proud and so excited for them, you know? So it's like, you can go from one emotion and disappointment to, you know, one year later being at the very peak. So it's pretty cool. So not to change subjects completely, but you had that big disappointment in your senior year. Obviously, you guys did not reach your goal that year as well uh, for, for you individually or for a team. What do you think that taught you in life? Did it ever help you move forward in life? Uh, is this something you think about all the time and wish you could go back to that game and change things around? Or, or did you use that kind of fa that failure or that setback kind of later on in life and in college sports as well and in, in your future? Yeah, that's a really good question. So, you know, I don't know 
I definitely used it more moving forward. I never looked back. I'm not someone who carries regret or wishes things would change. So I always think of any loss, any mistake, it's a lesson learned, right? So what can I take from this? And, you know, in my mind, it was just something, it's not like we didn't try, it just didn't work out for us. We all showed up, we all gave 110%. It's just something that just didn't pan out for us. We were prepared and they always say, we had already beaten Woodbury twice that year. The third win against a team is always the hardest because mm -hmm. everyone's going back to the drawing board. Um, they know how we play and we just didn't make enough adjustments. Um, but yeah, so moving forward, I would just say, I think, I think it just made me mentally tougher, to be honest with you, to be able to feel that much disappointment and then to know I still wanted to compete and go back. Um, I think it just makes you, when you're in those situations and those game moments that are so important, um, it just teaches you that you really need to rise to the occasion, appreciate what it's for, and you really have to stay focused and compete. You can't get lost in the emotions of if you're down by six with only a minute left, right? You have to like always be focused and willing to come back and lay it all out there because you don't know what that minute's going to bring. And if you let yourself get down about it, then you're kind of taking yourself out of the game. So if anything, I think that situation in general, looking back, it almost strengthens you if you can get through it and rebuild that it'll prepare you for that next game and just make you stronger. So. Nice. I love it. Anything else uh, on basketball before we wrap up uh, your winter seasons or uh, anything with your high school career with basketball? Um, no, like I said, I think it's my, like I said, that was always my serious sport. I knew that we could compete there and go far postseason. Um, and so we always took it serious. We were competing hard. We still had a lot of fun, a lot of great chemistry, a lot of memories, you know, sleepovers, fun things, dinners out. Um, but again, we were always so focused in that sport. Uh, just a lot of fun. A lot of those girls, like I continue to follow, we're still good friends and it's just such great memories. So no, basketball by far um, was one of my most favorite sports and basketball still is today. I mean, we have college basketball on in the house nonstop. So I'm so mm -hmm. excited, excited for that season to start, but. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So then we move into the spring season and uh, let's talk about that one. Yeah. So spring season, freshman year, I was back released full time. Um, I ran track freshman year. Um, I more was than a minute, right? You were able yes. to do more than, okay, sweet. It was, yes. Well, my races weren't longer than a minute. So maybe that's why I could do it. I never really put two <laughs> and two together, but I was released to do whatever I needed to do. Um, I was a hundred hurdler, a 300 hurdler and a long jumper. Um, and so I actually, I did that um, freshman year, sophomore year and junior year, I ran track. And then my senior year, um, I thought I'd mix it up a little bit and I went out for the golf team. So just for fun, <laughs> fun way to, to kind of end my year. Um, but yeah, so, you know, track to me was always a lot of fun. It was a good way to stay in shape and have good workouts really for the other two sports that, you know, if I were to layer my sports, it would basketball was my primary sport. Soccer was my fun, but I really loved competing. And then track was my third sport just because I really like staying in shape. Um, I loved hurdling. It was a lot of fun. Um, I was an all-conference hurdler as well. Uh, I remember some of my track meets, um, gosh, there was a girl in Woodbury who went D1 to Kansas and she was such an amazing hurdler. So I loved our meets against them. They used to be in our conference at that time and um, just competing against really top athletes because it just drives you to be your best. That's probably one of my favorite things because you're either going to rise to the occasion um, or you're going to walk back to the drawing board to figure out what you need to do better next time. You know what I mean? So it's just, it was a lot of fun to compete against that. Um, I also did the four by 200, uh, a lot of sprints and relays just where they needed extras to fill in. Um, but primarily I was a hurdler and then, uh, yeah, so freshman, sophomore and junior year, I think it was, um, all conference freshman and sophomore year, junior year, I actually, uh, kind of switched between hurdling and kind of doing the long distance team. So I'd work out with the long distance team and I ended up with an injury junior year. So um, I started the season for probably two or three weeks and then I sat out um, for six to eight weeks and then came back. My only meet back was um, the conference meet. And so I wasn't in very good shape when I came back um, from my injury. And so um, I just ran the 100, 300 hurdles and I didn't qualify. Um, 
but I still competed hard. I tried my hardest and that's all about all I could do at that time. So what was the golf like uh, then? I mean, you you go from soccer, which is obviously a huge team sport, basketball team sport, track, pretty individual, but you got that kind of team atmosphere around you as well with relays mm -hmm. and, and just, just a community atmosphere with at the track events. Uh, and then you go to the golf <laughs> course and you're all by yourself out there. So what was that like? Yeah, golfing was fun. So um, my really good friend at the time, Denise Deutsch and I, we, she, we ran track together, but then we were like, hey, let's just do golf. And really for us, it was more about going out to hitting greens every day, you know, going out and golfing around a golf. And we definitely, I mean, we learned a lot, we improved, um, we had a lot of fun, but yeah, it was very different. It's, I mean, with track, it's, even though it's a team sport, it's still very singular too, um, individual. And so that part didn't really bother me. Um, I think it's enjoyable. For me, golf just was like, I'm so active. It wasn't active enough for me. So I'm glad I didn't do it all four years. I know mm -hmm. some people just love it. My son is loves golfing. Um, we do it as a family. I grew up starting golfing at four. So it's like, it, it had always been a big part of who I was. So I enjoyed doing it. But I realized after practicing every day, it's not the same as when you go out once a week with your family or friends. So it was a lot. It was good. Um, it was different. It was, it just was a lot of fun because I learned a lot of techniques that I would say my dad didn't teach me out on the golf course, just from coaching, just like chipping, putting like basics and just different strategies that you wouldn't necessarily think about. So it really like the mental piece that golf brings, I think is huge where um, some of the other sports you're so caught up in, it's like fast thinking and reactionary that golf, you really have to like sit back, think a strategy where you're placing um, and just different pieces. So it was definitely a different take being out for that sport. Um, I think I definitely like more quick reaction sports better. Uh, cause you can really, for those people who can like find their calmness, I think golf is awesome. When you think about it and have strategies, lay the ball up short, whatever. Um, for me, I just like reacting, going running. So it was fun. It was a fun way to end my sports career at Hastings. Um, I don't have regrets for not going back out for track. Um, cause I would have always regretted not trying something new. Mm -hmm. Nice. So. Yeah. So, so you play soccer, basketball, track and field and golf, four different sports throughout high school. You played a bunch of sports growing up through uh, elementary schools and in the middle school as well. A lot yes. of different coaches that you had a ton of HYAA, uh, activities. You had a lot of coaches. Who do you think one of the best coaches you played for is? Did they teach you a certain lesson? Um, what did they teach you? Something that really stuck with you. So uh, if you do want to pick a couple, I know this is a really hard question or a lot that's of people really to pick from. Question. So, yeah. So yeah, if fun. you want to pick one person, that's fine. If you want to pick one person for every sport or maybe each age, age level too. So you can go for yeah. it. So your best coach. And I, yeah. And I probably won't pick too many. Um, I will say the fact of the matter is back when I was going through school, like, especially with soccer, parents were our coaches and it was just so unique because they were coaching us in a sport that they had never played because soccer was so new when we were playing it in the Hastings community. So they were learning at the same time we were learning. So there was a lot of different um, fun aspects to learning with your coach at the same time. I think it takes a lot of this, I won't say the seriousness out of the sport, but you're definitely using each other as sounding boards of what drills work, how do you wanna play, moving different positions, strategies. Um, so a lot of those parents, you know, I just give them props for stepping up and coaching and doing something that they had never played before. Um, but I will say, so some of my uh, most fun coaches, gosh, you know, I hate to say it, but it's like Mr. Stockman for basketball, um, Mr. Burr for basketball. These are teachers who um, would coach and just hard nose, but have fun with the girls. Just a lot of, and it, I don't even know how to explain them. They just get on you. They razz you. They make you run. A lot of like just old school techniques of, mm -hmm. I mean, you were on the line if you said anything out of source, but then you're laughing with them two minutes later. So no, I would say definitely Mr. Burr, you know, definitely Stockman. They taught, they gave us such a good work ethic. I think they taught us how to work hard, how to still have fun um, and really taught us how to be good teammates. Cause you know, Sometimes when you have as much energy as some of the kids do, you think you just want to be on the court all the time. 
And it's definitely going through school about like equal playing time, not necessarily equal playing time, but making sure everyone has an opportunity to be successful and grow. And they were really good about teaching those moments and making us good teammates and cheering on everyone's successes. So I really appreciated them for that piece because it kind of grounds people as well when you become a good teammate. Um, and then I would say too in basketball, probably Coach Shaw. Um, I'm gonna go Coach Young and Coach Shaw, my junior and senior year. Um, Coach Young was all about motivation. So she had a motivational saying for every game, every day, and I still follow her on social media. Mm -hmm. She's still the same. She went on to coach college, semi-pro, and now she's back at like Nicolette and, you know, um, coaching her daughter and whatnot. So it's like her daughters have gone through and played college sports as well. Um, but yeah, just her motivational piece and just the team first identity that she taught, that just was a lot of fun to be a part of. Um, and then Coach Scholl was all about the game. Uh, so I really appreciated her viewpoint and how she picked apart the game and really taught us. That was the first year, I will say, in practices where we would practice what the other team would do. So we would know how to defend their offense. So she really taught a great basketball IQ on how to be strategic. Um, we would have our second line actually become other players on the other team. And so, and what they would do, and it was their job to kind of be that so that the starting five more or less could learn how to defend and also score against their type of defense that they run. And then we would run vice versa for each other, you know, first line for second line for when, you know, we're interacting. So gosh, I really loved how Michelle taught us, you know, mental toughness, how to compete, just the IQ of the game. And she also was really good about uh, at the beginning of the season, especially, you know, we set goals. That was the first time I think I remember a coach teaching me, what do you want out of this season? Like, what's your goal? And we sat there in, in a five minute wall sit thinking about <laughs> where we wanted to be at the end of the season. Was it, you know, section champs? Are we good with being third or fourth? Like, where do you want to be? And so, yeah, goal setting, Michelle was just hard nosed and for, as soft-spoken as she was and kind, she just really was able to instill a lot of hard work and just really game-specific strategies and um, taught me really how to compete as an athlete, which I, I really appreciated. So what do you, what do you think um, that work, that what she did uh, mimicking the other team, you know, um, going through the other team's offense or defense, and, and the second team is being there, the defense for a second or being the offense and switching. What do you think that did? I think you went into it a little bit, but maybe just going into a little more detail about what that did to your basketball IQ. Did you see the game in a whole new light? Did, did your mind just kind of blow up or expand or, or explode here? Thinking about uh, just a different point in the game that you never really saw before. Just go through what, what that kind of really taught you. Yeah. So for me, what I think it really taught me was, I think you could draw back to these conclusions too because of how successful you were on the court because of these things. And so it really gives you another dimension to look at athletics and sports. And I definitely used it moving forward. Um, it really grew my game, especially because I was a defender first. So I was not primarily on the court to score points. I was always on the other teams, the opponents, probably best offensive player. Um, you put me on a breakaway and I could lay up probably 50 layups and only half would go in. Um, <laughs> I was super fast, no touch, but um, no. So realistically, what she taught me was how my role was important, right? So I had, when we were going offense against defense and our offense was practicing how to beat the defense, um, I learned how to be a part of an offense, how my role was important, how I could facilitate. Um, I learned different aspects of the game, but then when we were practicing defense and that person who I was going against was mimicking the other person's best offensive player, I then pictured myself in the game and how I could jump passing lanes, how I could then stop if she was a driver to the basket where I needed to be or where help defense needed to be. Um, it was just really awesome to then have the success on the other side. And then in the game situation, we were taking away plays where they're having to pivot and kind of 
pull up a new strategy, probably, you know, the first couple min minutes into the game instead of at halftime. And so we took a lot of team teams out of their game early because of how she taught us. And I think that just instilled a lot of confidence in us because we were getting the success from the hard work that she was putting in into our games themselves, just through scouting and how she implemented them into our practice plans. Um, and I will say I did take it away because even after coaching my daughter's travel game, we would run into the same team over and over. And we would always point out, well, here's their inbound plays. Where do you need to be to get the ball? Here's the offense they run. And it's just understanding the game from a different perspective mm -hmm. and just trying to be smarter than the other team, um, being one leg up, you know, and, and I think it goes a long way and not everyone thinks that way. And so when you do have that extra layer of dimension, it just makes you that much more competitive. For sure. Now think of, we just talked about coaches, thinking about the players you played with. You've played many different sports, many different people growing up. Uh, who do you think, and once again, very hard to nail down maybe one person for this. So you can go into uh, a couple of different people for each sport or maybe one person for every sport. It uh, doesn't matter to me. So uh, who do you think one of the best teammates you played with was uh, something that really, someone that really brought something different to the game uh, or was maybe a shoulder to cry on when you needed uh, someone that you really modeled uh, example after something along those lines. So who do you think that best teammate was that you played for uh, throughout your high school career? Yeah, that's another really great question. So um, I will answer just a couple of these because I do have a couple depending on how you look at it. Um, so one of my really good friends who I've already mentioned was Denise Deutsch. Um, she was a part of my social group um, and we were in every sport together. We went from soccer to basketball uh, to track together. And so I really would say she's one of my favorite teammates just because we were inseparable on the court, on the field or off. Um, and for me, that was just so important to have that one person that is your confidant, that picks you up if you have a bad game or you pick them up. Um, and there was never any judgment, always encouragement, always support. And we just always had so much fun. So just from that aspect, um, I would say she's always been one of my favorite teammates, friend, whatever. Um, we even after many years later, we still play volleyball together in, in like women's league, whatnot. So um, just a lot of fun. We'll do 5k runs together, still connected. Um, now from like a competing standpoint, I go back and I already mentioned her too. Um, I will say, you know, a lot of fun to compete with. Obviously I'm going to say Aaron Diddy, just tons of fun. Um, but from, I was a guard. So I will also have to say Katie Hertel is probably one of my favorites. We played soccer together and we played basketball together. And I'm one who just likes to go and push and she does too. So for as much as we, we always played the same position too. So it was kind of fun to like go through sports and push and have her push back. I felt like she was someone who always gave me a run for my money and always made me better. And I tried my hardest to work hard so I could hopefully help her get better too. So just from a team aspect, she was one that always challenged me, was always kind, super supportive, inclusive. And I just really felt like, you know, she made me want to be those things for her too. So she's by far one of my favorite teammates looking back. And then I would also say, um, gosh, when you're really young, so my sophomore year, probably um, it's another funny one, but Angie Fult, she, um, she played, I played soccer with her. She ended up playing soccer at St. Thomas. Uh, she was a senior when I was a sophomore and just a lot of fun. She was one of the seniors that were just super accepting of the underclassmen uh, and had a lot of fun with us. And it just made us feel really comfortable being out for a sport when, gosh, when you're an underclassman, at least back in the day, it was really intimidating to be on the field with seniors. And I don't know that it is the same anymore. I think girls carry a lot more confidence and maybe it was just me back then too, I don't know. Um, but. I just remember her being so welcoming and open and always like throwing out a joke and making people feel comfortable. So I just remember her as just always being an awesome teammate as well. Nice. So you wrap, wrap up your high school career, take us to your post, uh, post high school college. Uh, where did you go? What sports you played? Uh, and then what your major is and then kind of how you moved on from there in life. Yeah. So I ended up going, um, my freshman year, I went to River Falls. I actually didn't play any sports my freshman year. Um, I then transferred to St. Olaf College. Um, 
and my sophomore year, I started playing soccer and I played soccer um, my sophomore through senior year at St. Olaf. It was uh, a lot of fun. Uh, the only thing it made me regret is not going out for sports at River Falls. Um, the one thing I will say about college sports is it's a job. Um, it is a lot of hours. And even when the season's done, you're up at 6 a.m. doing agility and weights and training sessions before classes starts. Um, but yeah, it was so worth it. The girls on the soccer team at St. Olaf. And again, I, I went out for soccer because really that was my opportunity. It was the sport I was the most successful in, even though it probably wasn't the one I was the most passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, but I still had such a great time playing it. And the one thing I will say is even though college sports are a job um, and I was still division three and it still was a job, um, it's your family. You have so much, you put blood, sweat and tears in during the season and in the off season. And a lot of those girls, I mean, they ended up being my roommates. We lived together after school. Um, they're just a family. And you, when you play on the field that hard and put in that many hours together, you just become so close. So it's so worth it. And you learn so much hard work. You learn how to um, balance your workload, how to study on a bus or a van, you know, however you're transporting to your away games and weekends, you know, off campus. And um, gosh, it was a lot of lessons learned that were just really valuable. Um, I majored in math at St. Olaf and um, then graduated. And I actually, I work for an energy company uh, from, I originally uh, worked for what's called Darleton Energy Group, uh, and it's owned by two other Hastings alumni, Marty C. and Mike Vaughn. And so they sold the company, but I'm still at the same one 21 years later. Um, it's now NG, it's a French owned company, but um, yeah. So I've been there for 21 years and that's kind of where my college has taken me into a work life. And um, I'm still very heavily involved in sports. Uh, probably like three years out, I still coached summer soccer here in Hastings. Um, I did one year stint as the JV coach up at the high school. Uh, you know, I was coaching kids in the summer program for a few years that I didn't have any ties to. I just still really wanted to be involved in the community and coaching. And then uh, I got pregnant and had my daughter. And from there, I just started coaching my kids. So it's been just a lot of fun uh, learning sports and teams and uh, from a totally different aspect. Because as you're leading these kids through their journeys, you're hoping that they can pick up on some of these valuable lessons that you learned as well and not kind of getting lost in the wrong moments of sports and hoping they're taking in the right ones. So for sure. So you kind of summed up my, my last two of my, some of my last questions here for you. So, uh, talk about your family too, uh, if it, as much of your family that you want to talk about. And then my last thing for you then on that section is, um, how are you still connected to athletics? Uh, you talked about coaching, uh, summer soccer, JV soccer, and now your coach, uh, your, your kids coach, uh, sports as well. So talk about that. And then your connection to Hastings through that as well. Yeah. So my family currently, my oldest daughter is Taylor. She's actually up at Duluth in her fifth year of school. She's going to be a math teacher. Um, she went through Hastings High School. She played volleyball and softball all the way through. Um, and then she dabbled in basketball. I just couldn't get her to uh, really go out for it early enough to really enjoy the sport, to want to stay out for it. Um, and then I have my daughter, Keegan, who's a freshman this year. Um, she plays soccer, um, basketball, and track one year in middle school. She has since moved on and now doing volleyball. Um, and we'll be doing basketball again this winter. And I'm still trying to encourage her to try track one year as well. Um, and then I have a little guy, Xander, who's in sixth grade. Uh, he's really into baseball and basketball. And uh, I don't know if I'll ever get him to try any fall sport or not, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, and so coaching wise, um, I coached Keegan all the way through um, soccer as long as she was in HFC until she went over to club sports in the city and then travel basketball. I coached her team the last two, three years. Um, the first couple of years was coached by Brent Arnold and Dana or um, Shane Strain. So she's always had really strong coaching on the basketball side too, which has been super fun just to see different styles there. Um, but yeah, and then now I'm helping, actually this year I'm helping with the sixth grade basketball coach, coaching, um, just an assistant there. 
and uh, I'm on the basketball board, just kind of helping organize things for the girls' side. Uh, the program doesn't have strong numbers, so we're just trying to be creative and figure out how we can encourage more girls at a younger age to be a part of basketball in this community. So that's kind of what I'm trying to tackle at this moment with the help of some other community members. So for sure. Last couple of questions then for you, Sue. You had you played three different sports throughout high school. You got tons of varsity experience, tons of sporting experience, especially in college as well. Looking back on those experiences, if you could give parents or coaches two pieces of advice, what do you think they would be and why? Yeah. So the one thing I would say is um two pieces of advice. I think the one thing I always try to encourage my kids to be is athletic, uh, to not specialize. I think that so much now is focused on just being in one sport and becoming the specific athlete, um, like a basketball player or a soccer player, and you end up doing it year round. And I don't, you know, I've, I've done enough reading on it. I don't think it's that great for your body. It's good for your bodies to take rest. But I also think just being athletic in the sense of getting in the weight room and being strong and doing injury prevention and working on your endurance and just little pieces like that, that sets you aside when you're a multi-sport athlete that will help you compete and probably compete better against kids who do do year round sports that are very skill specific and might be a little bit more advanced in the skill. I think you can be a better athlete than a lot of those kids and still compete hard and compete against them well. Um, and you're going to enjoy your sport so much more by taking a break. Um, we just did it. Keegan and I were just discussing this the other day and she was, I won't say she was bummed the whole time she was playing volleyball. She was bummed. She didn't have the time she wanted to, to practice basketball as well. Um, but now she just said, she goes, I'm so glad I took that break. Cause I'm actually so excited to go back. And she, you can just see that passion kind of like reinvigorated in her where I think if you do it year round, it, it kind of numbs it a little bit. It becomes a job. And so um, one thing I've, I would say is be a multi-sport athlete, try as much as you can and just compete hard and just try to be an athlete. Um, the other thing I would say too is be inclusive. Uh, don't worry about winning a middle school game. Make sure everyone's getting or soccer game or whatever it might be. Make sure everyone's getting an opportunity and I go back to Coach Burr and Coach Stockman, how they taught me how to be a good teammate and include everyone. And not everyone's at the same level as your top three, two or three players. But at the same point, they have just as much right to be there and develop and you need to cheer on everyone's successes. And it just makes such great friendships and great teammates. And I look at Hastings where you have one team on the girls' side and the skill gap could be big. Um, but it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, they were all such great friends and they cheered each other on and they were just such good supporters of each other. And those friendships are going to last forever because of that, instead of trying to make it more about winning a game. So I just think inclusion is such a big part of it as well. For sure. Same kind of question now. And now for the people that are on the court, on the field, uh, on the track, two pieces of advice for student athletes. Tons of years, years of experience from you. Uh, as a, as an athlete yourself. So what do you think you would tell student athletes uh, from all your experience and your perspective? Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Just from like the student athlete perspective, I think it's so important to stay involved and do multiple sports. It teaches you such great life lessons. I think about what I was able to pull from being included on these teams. And mind you, um, I went from being all aspects of a team, a leader on a team, a captain on a team, to a role player, to even being on JV golf my senior year, right? And not even being on the top team. So I would say just, it's, it teaches you such great work ethic, um, how to stay organized, how to keep balance, how to meet friends, new friends, and just to like meet new people that you wouldn't have met had you not tried something new as well. So um, yeah, the whole student athlete piece of it, I, I really, it really helped me prepare for college and the fact that you needed to stay organized. You needed to know when you're studying and school is always first, regardless of how much time you need to put into your sports. And so it's just prioritizing and looking at your list and what's important. So um, 
I just think it teaches you how to work hard. And my words of advice is when it gets frustrating um, or you feel overwhelmed, just to take a step back and maybe, you know, set, write some things down that you've accomplished that you can feel really good about looking back on and then write down the goals of where you wanna be and just kind of baby step into them so that you can feel proud of what you've accomplished so far and also try to motivate yourself to keep going. Cause it is a lot to be a student athlete but it is just still really rewarding. Awesome, Sue, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you, thanks for having me.